only al Sudan al Jadid al Bashm al Nahna kuluna will preserve the unity of our country. And this should, and this should be, be taken seriously. Because uh, we have seen uh, what, uh, what has, has happened. No regime should be allowed to declare jihad against its own people. <laughs> this, is, this is a recipe for disaster. How you, do, you say those people will declare jihad on them? Now, in this context, I want to, I wa I want to, to talk about uh, Darfur, because some people are mystified about what is going on in Darfur. And, 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 and uh, it, 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 is, it, it, is, it is tragic, but it was bound to happen. What is happening in Darfur is, uh, is, 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 is uh, government, what I would call government counterinsurgency gone wrong. See, counterinsurgency, and this is a military, uh, it's a military subject. When a regime is confronted with, with insurgency, it develops counterinsurgency. I just did that tomorrow. I don't know what the counterinsurgency is in Arabic. Yeah, that's right. tomorrow good. Al mudada tomorrow The logic of it is that the government recruits people, individuals, from the constituency of the Mutamaradin, from the constituency of the insurgents. Government trains this and forms them into counterinsurgency units. These counterinsurgency units then fight alongside regular troops to defeat the insurgents. So far, this is legitimate. And you go to any US training school here, you will find FMs, field manuals, on counterinsurgency. What has happened in the Sudan is different from what I have just said recruiting individuals from the constituency of the insurgents. Why, 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 why do, do governments do this? Because these individuals, they know the local languages, they know the local cultures, they know the local terrains. So they will di direct the military. They will help the military. They are supplementary. They assist the regular forces. In the Sudan, it is not individuals that are recruited from the constituency of the insurgents. It is tribes that are recruited, ethnic groups or elements of ethnic groups that are recruited. And they are told, and another ethnic group is identified as the enemy. And so you have counterinsurgency tribes. It happened in the South before. Militia. The government used militia, tribe, tribal based militias to mobilize their tribes to attack other tribes. This is what happened in Rwanda. The, 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 the tribe of the, of, of, of the, of the president, Habriamana, the Hutu, were used as a counterinsurgency tribe against the Tutsi, who were the tribe of the rebellion. The same thing is happening in the Sudan, that the elements of Arab tribes in Darfur, and it is not all the Arab tribes, and the majority of the Arab tribes in Darfur are against this. <laughs> but government use, uses elements of them, just as they used in the, in them in the south. So the Mordor, it is not Mordor, but are Arabs against Africans, because there are no Arabs in the south. But the same counterinsurgency strategy was used to devastate, recently the Shulu Kingdom, and some of you heard it, was devastated by this, uh, by this tribal uh, based militias and this government counterinsurgency. And so I want to say very clearly that the, the, the problem in Darfur is not the Janjaweed as such. The Janjaweed are only a tool. The problem in Darfur is The problem of Darfur is the, count, is the government counterinsurgency counter strategy. It should not happen. No government should be allowed to use tribes against tribes in order to remain in power. And so, 
when the when the international community says talks about the disarmament, well, the government should disarm the Janjaweed. It's, it's a big joke. <laughs> because it is the same government that armed the Janjaweed. And so how can the same government disarm part of its forces? <laughs> <laughs>